Recording has started. We're recording geometry at WSSB, and today is Tuesday, the 8th of September. All right, so I would like you guys, we're going to be on page 12. I think it's A12. I want to go back and do a little quick review of some of the stuff we went over um, about points and lines, right, um, last class. And then we're going to extend that into some more definitions and reading tactiles with collinear and non-collinear line segments and rays. Hopefully we'll get to planes even today. All right? So your brains need to be prepared to take in all this information again, talk about it, think about it, do good thinking around it. Um, reading tactiles, we're going to experience some tactile graphics and some of them are better than others. You're going to start to realize that there's differences in how the tactile graphics are made. Sometimes they put the label of the point above the point. Sometimes they put it below the point. Sometimes they put it to the left or the right of the point. And you just got to find it. Sometimes the tactiles are kind of squeezed together and we got to make our way around it. So my job is to kind of help you do that descriptively and then with hand over hand if we need to, okay? All right? So what do you remember about last class? I remember. There's two main things we talked about and defined. Points and lines. You're right. We need points and lines in order to start making things, don't we? If we don't have points, well, what's the point? All right? <laughs> okay. So, so what do you remember about a point, especially in terms of geometry and math? What's special about points? Hmm. You have a point within 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 a point. Yeah, they don't have any size, do they? It's like Horton hears a who, right? That elephant that looked at a little clover and saw a speck of dust and there was a world on the speck of dust, right? Well, points can have a world within a point within a point within a point, right? So they have no size. How do we name points in geometry? I got a dot on the paper, and I've got an A above the dot. What would I say? What's that? <laughs> capital A, right? I'd say point A, wouldn't I? Point capital A. We use capital letters to name our points. Okay. All right. Good. And there's no special braille for that, is there? We just say point, P O I N T, capital A. All right. Now. If you turn your page, your Braille page, you get into the next graphical representation that you guys learned about. What is that? A line with points. That's right, a line with points. So the next thing, so we take these points and we throw them out there in space, and then we connect two of them, right? We have them extend in both directions off of those points with arrowheads, and we call this a line, right, Rebecca? We call it a line. So a line, it's made up of an infinite number of points. We need at least two, right, because we've got to connect a couple things together. But then on a line is infinitely many points, isn't there? We could label points all over the place. But the two we chose on this line that we're looking at on page, what is it, A12, B12, is line. And it's got an A and a B point on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Now we name lines several ways. This particular line, we could name it with the points, right? We could name it line what? A. A. B. B or... B-A, that's right, because we can name ourselves frontwards and backwards if we're aligned. We're not just Orianne, we're Nero, right? We're not just Rebecca, we're Akabar, right? We're not just Paige, who's not here yet, but she would be Ikeb, or Ikebox, Ikeb, We're not just Cody, we'd be Yiduk, right? 
Okay? <laughs> so that's a good way to remember you can name lines in any order because they extend in both directions, right? It doesn't matter where we start to name them. We have to name them with two letters. We don't name them with one letter. We don't name them with three letters. We always just name them with any two points on the line. So in this case, they only gave us two points to name. But maybe they might have had A, B, C, D on the line. We could have chose any of those two points to name the line. A, D, A, C, C, A. Okay? All right, so this is line A, B, or line B, A. It also can be named by a special little letter if it's present with the line. What isn't the, There's a script letter with this line. What letter is that? L. So we could say this is line script letter L. They don't always put a script letter with lines, but sometimes they do, and you can name them that way. Now, in Braille, here we go. you got to test your Nemeth Braille. I know it. You know it. You know it. Okay. <laughs> All right. How do we label a line in Braille? Well, um, the two letters in capitals. <laughs> okay, capital A, capital B. And then B A, mm -hmm. B D, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. D, mm -hmm. O, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Terminator. Terminator. Well, Good. I'll repeat yeah. that for the recording. <laughs> so it's capital letter, capital letter. So in this case, capital A, capital B, and then D H for the over, the directly over indicator then the shape indicator because they're creating a shape, right? They're making an arrow with the OW, the dash dash, and the O, and then they're terminating it with the terminator symbol. And in print, it's an AB with a line over the top. So, they have it easy. Uh, what's that? They have, it easy. they have it easy, that's right. And so Nemeth, Dr. Nemeth said, well, okay. if I want to indicate that, I'll say it's directly over and I've got this line over. Now, for your tests and your homework, you're, you don't have to braille all this stuff out, but you do have to be able to read it. What you'll have to braille, though, is that it's a line. You'll have to say L-I-N-E, right? <laughs> you can use your contractions, but L, contraction I-N-E, and then you could say capital A, capital B, and that would be fine, okay? okay? You can label it with the actual word, just like you can say point A or point B. You can say line A-B. However, in the book, most likely, they're going to use all this braille on you. And so you, when you're going and reading along, you would have to read that and know that it means line AB. It kind of makes sense with this one because it's a little arrow, right? It's a double-sided arrow that goes over. All right. So then we had to practice in an example on the next page, on that page 13. You had to practice. You had a line to look at. You had to practice naming this line, right? You had a line that started at P in the bottom left and extended through Q and R. It has two arrowheads on each end, and they named it with a script letter, and they named it with three, or they put, they didn't name it yet. They put us, they labeled it with a script letter, and they put three points on the line, P, Q, and R, and then they said, hey, name this line. There's all sorts of different ways to name it. There's an M at the top. Do you want to label it with the M? What would you say? Line M. Line M. That's right. Okay, what's another way you'd label it? Line PQ. Remember to say line before it, right? Line PQ. Okay, how else do you want to label it, Rebecca? Line RP. Line RP. That works, okay? All sorts of different ways we could name this, right? Forwards and backwards. So you got that, and you got all the points on there. We don't label it line P, Q, R. We don't put three letters in for a line. We're going to learn later that we use three letters for angles. Okay? So for lines, we just need two of the points, and they can be any two of the points. Hello, Mr. Face. Hello. Coming in to check in about Woodshop? Yeah. I think today we're going to continue with our project plan. We yeah. started with a good plan, and we're going to want to um, talk about this it some more. This is commercial break. And then maybe <laughs> hopefully get some things started setting up to start producing. I'm not sure if you want to, since the weather's really nice this week, round up uh, paint supplies like a roller and maybe see from Miss Johnson if we have any chalkboard paint and we could start painting one of those boards maybe as part of our deal, but we're going to need the supplies. All right. I'll keep thank an eye out. All right. Thank you. All right. Back to this. Okay. All right. So that's a quick review on what we did Thursday, right? This section isn't done. Okay, so we got points. They've now become lines. Now we're going to talk about some 
Yeah, yeah. All right, you're jumping forward, but back up one page and take a look right at the end of the of the braille down at the bottom. It should say three points. Three points, please. Yeah, three points lie on the same line as in example one, right? We have three points P, Q, and R. Mm -hmm. These points are called collinear. Collinear. C O L I N E A R. Collinear. What? what does L C O L L I N E A R collinear? So co line, right? Collinear. So what does co mean when you put it in front of something? Like co worker, cooperate. What does that mean when we put co in front of something? Co partners. Kind of <laughs> redundant, but what does it mean when we do that? Co, prefix co, co-linear. Together. Together, right, Rebecca. <laughs> I thought it was Turning on the good thinking, you're right. See how right. this is like, geometry is like, taps into your English kind of thing. That's why some students really like it. So co-linear means together, together on a line, right? They're together linear. So, so. Collinear means that three or more points, these points are on the same line. So P, Q, and R were collinear in our last picture, in our last graphic. So if points do not lie on the same line, then we call them non-collinear, right? Because when we put non in front, front of something, that means it's not, right? It's negative, right? So non-collinear means that the points are not on the same line. That's really important for later because we're going to learn about collinear and non-collinear lines and how they're going to be used, non-collinear points, excuse me, how they're going to be used to make planes and shapes, okay? So um, let's go take a look at another graphic. Now this is a really good practice graphic for when you're a Braille reader, graphics can get kind of tight together and they can get a little confusing how they lay in the points. So this is where you have to make sure your ears are on and you're listening very carefully. And if you get a little lost, you got to advocate for yourself. You got to say, "Oh, I'm lost." All right? So I'm going to do my best to be very specific with my language and pretty consistent with how I describe tactiles to you. And then if I need to, I'll take your hands and move them along the tactile if you say, "Hey, I need some help or I'm noticing you're struggling." All right, so find point A, which is in the top left of your graphic. Point A, it's got an arrowhead to the left of it, it's got a point, it's labeled above it, and it's starting a line. And if you follow that line at an angle from about 10 o'clock down to about 4 o'clock, okay, through point B, oops, now, as many do, it goes a little crooked and it's not. It actually goes straight through point E, okay? so. You're going from point A through the intersection and straight down through the next point E. Okay? Oftentimes, I've noticed in the five years I've been doing this, my Braille readers go A, B, and their fingers move to C. And that's, that's <laughs> kind of crooked. It's kind of crooked. But that's because it's so tight together. If these lines were a little spread apart, you'd be okay. So it's okay that you did that, but just make sure now you're focusing on A, B, E as a line. See how all three of those are together on the same line? Okay. Now, they labeled A above it, they labeled B above it, but they labeled E below it. You see that? Okay. All right. We could name that line several ways, couldn't we? Got A, B. Well, we don't want to use the E, right? Yeah. We wouldn't use the E, no three letters. But we could name it AB or ABOUT, right? We could name it B. B. Mm -hmm. We could name it AE, right? We could name it BA, EA. Okay, so we got a line there. Now go back over to A. Now directly below the point A is another line. And it starts at point D, and D is labeled below it, and it goes straight across like going from east or excuse me, west to east, and we'd start at nine o'clock, go through B, and go to three o'clock. That's another line. Notice they're sharing that point B where they intersect, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we could name that line. Bunch of points on it. We could name it several ways. How do you want to name it? Line what? CD. CD. All right. What's another way? Ariane. 
BC. Good. I would name it, I could name it DC or DB, right? Or BD, okay? Notice they both, when they intersect, they're intersecting at D. They're intersecting at one point, right? We'll learn about that later, right? So we got our line here. Now, we know that on the line, the three points like A, B, E, they're all on the same line. So what do we call them when they're all on the same line? Co-linear. Um, co no, co yep. Linear. Co-linear. Good. And what do we call if, so then the next line, we have DBC. What do we call those on that line? Co nope, those are collinear on that line, right? Oh. Now, what if I say DBA? Non-collinear. Non DBA or non-collinear, right? What if what name three other points that are non-collinear? They're all over the place. C, D, E. Good. C, D, E are non-collinear. You're right. C and D are on the line that goes from west to east, and E is down there below that on the next line down, right? Okay. So collinear and non-collinear points. Be very careful that you know how to identify those. All right? No new nemeth on that. It's just new word. Collinear, non-collinear. Kind of makes sense, right? Coline on the same line. non Coline, not on the same line. All right. Now, down at the bottom of the page, find where it says rays. Find it. Rays and line segments are parts of lines. Is it down at the very bottom of the page, I think? Mm, no. Nope. No? Oh, maybe it's on the next page. I'm sorry. Yep, it is. Is it on the next page? Ray there it is. Okay. Rays and line segments. So what are we on? D or C? D14? B. B13. B13. <laughs> All right. Now. There should be, there's a little note probably on the previous page that said reading and geometry. And I'll read that to you right now. The order of letters can be switched with lines, right? We know we can say our name front work and backward with a line and it's still the same, right? But with array, we can't. Array, we have to say them in the order in which it appears and it starts. The ray DF is not the same as ray FD, okay? We're going to learn about, and you're like, rays, what are those? Well, that's what we're going to learn about next. So up at that top of that B13, it says rays and line segments are parts of lines. So we get a line that extends in both directions, and now we're going to take a part of it, and we're going to call it either a ray or a line segment. A ray has a definite starting point, and then it extends through an, another point and into infinity. Okay. A line segment is going to have a starting point and an end point and not extend into infinity. It's going to be like a piece of the line. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this next section is describing the ray. It says it has a starting point, which is called its end point. That always cracks me up. The start is the end. <laughs> right? So the starting point is the end point. In other, you know, where they where it just has a point. The ray is named using that end point first and then another point on the ray. They have two examples of rays. One of them at the, the, the they're at the bottom of your page. The first one to the left, it starts with the point D, it's labeled above it, and extends at a slight angle down to the right through point F and it has an arrowhead. Notice that it just has one arrowhead. That's a ray. It starts at the endpoint D and extends through F. So we're going to call that ray DF. Okay? Notice the ray below it starts to the right at letter C and extends to the left through letter A and has an arrowhead. So we're going to call that ray CA. So it's not about orientation. It's not about like when we read, we read left to right. It's not about that. Rays, we always name from their end point, no matter where the end point is. If it's on the left of the page or the right of the page or the top of the page or the bottom of the page, we're going to start with its end point and we're going to name it through another. Now, we can say ray, R-A-Y, in the two capital letters and be done with it. Or 
we can use some Nemeth. Oh, goodness. And the symbol, it, it details two lines above, two braille lines above the drawing. It details the symbols for Ray CA. Okay, notice it's capital letter C, capital letter A. It has your over, your directly over, GH, right? Your shape indicator. And then it has just an arrowhead, an OW, and then a terminator. Does that make sense? So it's just putting a little one arrowhead above the C and the A, okay? In print, that's what we do. We write a capital C and a capital A, and we draw a little mini line with one arrowhead. So that's what they're saying in Nemeth you should do. Again, you don't have to braille out the Nemeth for me on your test or your homework. You could just say Ray CA, okay? If you want to braille it out, great. But do know you got to read it, right? They're going to have it written like that in the text. So that means Ray, okay? So then let's turn to page 14. All right, line segment, right? So we're dealing with a line, and now we have a segment of it. So do oh, your no good point. thinking. A segment means what? Section. A section. Excellent way to describe a segment, a piece of it, right? So a line segment is going to be part of a line that has two endpoints. And then all the points in between. If they want to label them or not, there's infinitely many points in between those two. But notice, there's going to be no arrowheads extending our line segment. Because if there were arrowheads extending our line segment, well, now it's not a line segment anymore. It's a line. So we just want a piece of it, like the edge of our book from corner to corner, right? We're just going to name it by its end point. So it's, we use each point and we name it. It's like a line in that we can name it frontwards and backwards. So this graphic that you're looking at, it has a point B at the left. Oops. Let's see. You need back one page. No, we're not looking at something different. There you go. All right. Point B is at the top left, and then it extends down at an angle to the right, like going from about 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, to point L. And we would name this segment B, L, capital B, capital L. Or we could name it Diablo. Yeah, <laughs> or we could name it capital L, capital B. We could say segment, capital L, capital B. You can type out the word segment. Okay? You can use your contractions if you want and say capital B, capital L, or capital L, capital B. Or you can use the symbol for a segment. Now, the symbol for a segment is kind of short. It's just GH, WH, ER. That just means directly over, give me a line. So they don't really make a shape for a line. They just decided to use GHWH terminator. Okay? So maybe it might be faster for you to use that instead of typing out segment. Or if you like consistency and you just want to type out everything like point and line and ray and use type out segment, that's all good. Okay? You get to decide. But be prepared in your books that if you see GHWH terminator, that means line segment. Okay? Okay? Any questions on segments? All right, now let's practice. Example four. So that was the page you were on there, Miss Rebecca. There you go. This tactile is actually a little easier to discern because they spread those rays apart as they intersect, and so we can kind of make it out. But again, I'll still talk you through the graphic before we work on it so you're feeling comfortable with it. Typically, my style of talking through graphics is I like to usually start in the left-hand side unless, the, unless it's a little wonky, and then I'll tell you I'm starting somewhere else. So I'm starting in the top left at point P, and point P is at about 10 o'clock on a clock face, and it extend, extends to the right through point B and through point C and has an arrowhead after point C after about 4 o'clock. Okay? So if we have an end point and an arrow point... What is that? Is it? Ray. It's a ray. Excellent. We could name this ray, couldn't we? We could name this ray a couple different ways. We always have to name it starting with what? The end. The end point. I know that starts with. Name it starting with the end. 
<laughs> okay, so, so P, all right, and then we could say PC, mm -hmm. Ray PC, or we could also say Ray P B, because it goes through that yeah. intersection there at B. <laughs> Paintball, <laughs> peanut butter or, and jelly. Or lead. Or what? I think lead. Lead? Oh, yeah, in chemistry. Yeah. Good memory. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, so that's Ray PB, Ray PC. Ray BC. Nope, BC is not the end point. That wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, go to the top right and find point D. And that's going to be at about 2 o'clock. And then it extends down to the left through about 8 o'clock. Starts at D. It goes through the intersection point B. There isn't another point that it goes through. So it's only going through the labeled two points. It's going through infinitely many, but it's labeled two points. Is it a ray, a line, a line segment? Whole thing. Is it a ray, a line, a line segment? What do you think? Ray. Good. And how would you name this ray? Only one way we can do it. DB. DB. Ray DB. Good. Ray DB. Excellent. Or you could use GH, shape indicator ED, um, and then your arrow, OW, right? And then terminator. Okay. Now, when we look at this graphic again, there's segments in it, isn't there? There's segments all over this graphic. A segment requires what? What's the definition of a segment? What components do you need for a segment? Can you have arrowheads on a segment? No. Nope. Just endpoints, right? So we just are going to pull out two endpoints and name it a segment. So for example, P to C, that's a segment. If I say segment PC or segment CP, okay? I, I pulled it out and said I just want that chunk of that ray, and now I'm going to call it a segment. What's another segment? Segment. Uh huh. Um, DB. DB. Excellent. Segment DB. Could I say segment BD? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. There's another one on there. Can you find it, Orianne? We got PC or CB, CP. We got DB or BD. Can you find another one? What? <laughs> CD jumps right now. If we had a drawing and we drew in between those two, that is a line segment. You're right. But they didn't draw it in, so we're going to say, all right, well, technically because they didn't draw it in, it isn't. it's not on the paper. But in reality, if we put it there, it really is a segment from C to D. But staying on your rays, um, could you find another segment? We have PC or CP. We have DB or BD. CB, excellent. Or PC or BC, right? CB or BC. And then we also have, I'll name two more, PB or BP. You see that? Okay. So rays and segments. So, so far you've got points, lines, collinear points and non-collinear points, rays, and line segments. Okay, shoo. All right, so then what? Now we take all of this information. So now we're being these geometry attorneys, right? We're walking into court and we're saying, I've got points and this is what a point is all about. I've got lines and this is what lines are all about. I've got line segments and rays and these are what these are all about. I've got collinear and non collinear. Now I'm going to move into what's called a plane P L A N E. P-L-A-N-E. Not an airplane, but a plane in mathematics or geometry. Okay? And it should say a plane is a flat surface that extends without end in all directions. Whoa, wrap your head around that. So, we got flat surfaces right in front of us. The page of our book, right? Mm -hmm. So the page of our book, just by itself, it's a plane. However, 
Not technically, it's a piece of a plane. Because the plane in geometry world, just like a line, is extending in all its directions, the left, the right, the top, or the bottom, into infinity. So imagine, if you will, that page on that book is slicing right through you, right? It's extending out the top, and I'm walking in front of it, and it's going right through me. You've got your arm resting on the side of it, and it's going through the side of your arm, right? It is extending into, into like lines, right? Because each edge of the paper could be a line if we had, if we imagined it extending into infinity, right? But what we do is we have these corners, and we say, oh, I've got a line segment. I've got these line segments coming together, and now I've got a plane segment that creates this page of the paper. But a, but a plane in its purest form is a flat surface that extends without end in all directions, right? So the surface of our table, flat surface, it really extends in this imaginary kind of way, right? All right? So now we're going to read the definition, the term plane and its description, and then look at a model of it. <coughs> so description, plane. For any three non-collinear points, well, that's why we had to learn about collinear and non-collinear. So we've got to get three points that are not on the same line. Two of them can be, of course, but one of them's got to be floating off the line. There is only one plane that contains all three points. So if I put these three points non-collinear, only one plane is going to contain all of them. If, if one of those points like drops below and becomes collinear with another, it's not part of this plane anymore. It's part of something else. All right? A plane can be named with a single uppercase script letter or by three non-collinear points. The plane at the right is named plane, P-L-A-N-E, A-B-C, or plane, script letter, capital M. So they give you a picture. It's a, the shape of it is, it looks like a parallelogram. It might be a rhombus. You're going to learn about those different shapes or learn again about them. You've probably learned about them a little bit. But this particular one, it doesn't matter what its shape is. Planes can be, just have to be a flat surface. They don't have to be a four-sided plane, they could be a three-sided plane, they could be a 20-sided plane, but they have to be a flat surface. And they have to have three non-collinear points in them. So this one has A, B, and C. Notice that you can't put A, B, and C on the same line, right? You can put A and B, you could put A and C, you could put B and C, right? But you can't put A, B, C on the same line. So we have a non-collinear, three non-collinear points, and then they do a script letter M up in the corner to name it by, if they want to name it with a script letter. The M is not a point. It's just they decided to say, oh, let's call this plain script letter capital M. Or we call it plain A, B, C. Now, you don't, there, notice that there, they didn't really say any order out to the letters. You could say it script CAB. You could say, oh, excuse me, you could say plain CAB. You could say plain BCA. I guess grammatically or math grammar wise, saying it in alphabetical order is helpful or tidy, okay? But it's not crucial. It just has to be the three non collinear points, all right? And always remember when we draw a plane, we talk about planes, they're just a part of the whole plane. The plane still extends into infinity. We're just chopping it so that we can take a look at it and use it for other things. All right? Now, points that lie in the same plane are called coplanar. So points that lie on the same line are called collinear, right? So points that lie on the same plane, that makes sense, coplanar, right? And then, if they don't lie on the same plane, well, if they didn't lie on the same line, they were called non-collinear. So if they don't lie in the same plane, what would we call them? Non-coplanar, right? And then there's always a joke in some of my classes. Don't be a coplanar. 
<laughs> Do your work. <laughs> All right. Um, so this plane that we just looked at has three coplanar points, right? If we took that plane and we hovered a point below it on another plane, like two pieces of your paper stacked on top of each other, right? Then the points on the plane below that plane, those are non-coplanar with the points on the plane above it. Does that make sense? Okay. So coplanar, non-coplanar. All right. Um, if we took a piece of paper and we had a bunch of points on it, like your braille, and we folded the paper over one of the points and kind of shared the point on the fold, mm -hmm. that, that point that would become part of two planes, right? It'd be it'd be the a, a point that was coplanar with one plane, coplanar with the other plane, and non-coplanar with each one, respectively. That makes sense? Okay. All of this is foundational. You're like, oh my gosh, what is this all about? But if you walked into the geometry court and said, hello, judge, this is a triangle, and the judge would say, well, why? You'd start out with, well, I need some line segments, and I need the line segments to come together at these angles, and I need three of them. And you'd start defining your points and your lines and your line segments and how they come together to create this triangle. So it's very foundational, points, lines, and planes. If we took our piece of paper and we, we pretended like it was a piece of wood and we put four of those, six of those pieces of wood together in a certain configuration, we create a box, right? Mm -hmm. Well, all those pieces of wood are plain. And then we have to put them together, and we create a three-dimensional figure. And in order to argue why we can do that, we, st we have to talk about the fact that we have planes to begin with, right? And those planes were made up of non-collinear points and, and coplanar points and segments, line segments. And they came together, and then we put the planes together, and they intersected, and then they became this box. And we would be able to argue that. Why is it this box? Oh, because of this reason. Okay. Right. So very foundational. So you got a lot of vocabulary you got to remember, and so that's what we're going to go through and practice in the exercises on uh, page 15 through 17. All right. We're going to do some check your understanding exercises, and then we're going to um, have a little mixed review too, and some standardized practice. All right. So. Let's go through number one through seven together, and then I'll let you, I'll kind of guide you, and you can kind of work together and with my assistance here or there to do the rest of the exercises. But let's take a look at number one. Can you find where it says check your understanding, number one, and be on page 15? It's probably going to be 15, I'm going to guess C, maybe, maybe B. Just say check no, for understanding. What is it? You went past it? Um, yep, you're right. That's not C, let's see. Well, maybe it's A. What? Check, yep, it's letter A. Number one, very top of page uh, A15. What does it say? Number one, explain the difference between a line and a segment. Is that what it says? Oops, okay, keep going. we got to find where it says. Oh, 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 there it is, down at the bottom, down at the bottom. There you go. Communicating mathematics. Okay. Check for understanding. So down at the bottom of page A15, about five lines up or so. All right. Explain the difference between a line and a segment. So you're in geometry court. You walk in there. The judge is like, Counselor Fidham, you have brought me two things. You're saying they're a line and a segment. How do I know? Please explain the difference between them. I'm trying to figure this out. They look the same to me. Oh, okay. Well, you have a co-counselor, so you can ask her assistance, but you could maybe explain to me what a line is, and then maybe your co-counselor could help you with the segment. So. I know a line is... Uh, 
Uh huh. <laughs> okay, it goes through a couple of points and it has infinite number of points on it. All right, that's a start. Is that all of a line? Is all it just goes through two points? No. What, counselor? Is it Phil? What's your last name? Um, I don't, ugh. <laughs> what is it? Counselor, hey, I'm not going to say Rebitta, Rebecca. I'm going to say <laughs> Counselor Ackerberg. No. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't. Hmm. What's your last name? I forgot. Haglin. Haglin. I, I said I almost said Falconer because I have a really really good friend. Her last name is Falconer. <laughs> um, okay, Haglin. Counselor Haglin. Mm. Your co-counsel here, Fitum, says that a line goes through a couple points. It has infinite number of points on it. Is there something else you would like to add to the description of a line? Yes. What? Um. A line also has two arrowheads. Leading oh. in both directions. Oh, why does it have those two arrowheads in both directions? Because it does. Because it does. <laughs> that's oh, that's not going to fly in my court. Because <laughs> they're guilty, that's why. <laughs> no, it you got to. What? Could keep going on. Yes, <laughs> Counselor Fidham. It shows us that it goes on, keeps going on, on into infinity. Okay, thank you, counselors. I now understand what a line is. Goes through two points, has infinite number of points in between, has two arrowheads on each end, going into infinity to show you that it extends on and up forever in both directions. Okay, now you brought me another subject in here, another another victim, no, suspect. What are we talking about? A client. You have another client <laughs> sitting in front of me, and you've told me it's a segment. Please uh, prove and tell me why this is a segment. Counselor Eglin, would you like to go first? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a line segment goes through an infinite amount of points, but doesn't have mm -hmm. two arrowheads, mm -hmm. so it doesn't extend to infinity. <laughs> mm, interesting description, excellent description. I understand a line segment still has infinite number of points, it's got two points that indicate, but it doesn't have arrowheads because it does not extend into infinity. Counselor Fidham, is there anything you'd like to add to this uh, suspect here, this client of yours, this segment? Why does it just have two points at each side of it? What are, what's up with that? I don't know. Nope. The judge would like to tell you that the judge is experienced with segments, and it's my understanding that a segment has those two points because they're the end point. A segment, mm -hmm. a definition of a segment would be a piece, right? You, I think I overheard you earlier discussing with your co-counsel that a segment is like a section, right? So it's a section of the line, yes? All right. Um, counselors, uh, how do you name these lines that you've brought before me and these line segments? Counselor Hagelin, how would you name a line? You have this line in front of me. What? How should I address it? How should I call it? Um, Yo, line. <laughs> line A B. <laughs> oh, line A B. So you name it with two yeah. points, I see, and you can say just line. Okay. All right. Uh, Counselor Fidham, um, how, how do I name this segment you have in front of me? <laughs> well, I heard your co-counsel say you could name a line saying line A B. Is it segment A B? Okay, that would make sense, logical sense. I like that in mathematics. That's very helpful. Okay, all right. So I, I'm understanding there's some differences between a line and segment. There's some similarities. Clearly, they have a couple points, an infinite number of points on them. But definitely, the differences are the arrowhead, you know, extend into infinity situation. Good. All right, nicely done. See, that was your first, like, hey, think about how I've got to, I've got to prove this. I've got to argue it. I just can't say, well, it's a line, <laughs> All right? And it's like, why? Why is it a line? You got to, you know, geometry lets you be, gives you permission to argue, gives you permission to prove. All right. Okay. So number two, you want to find out, see what number two says? It says Joel, you decide. 
Joel says that now that what is that? How does that Nemeth read? It's got a J and an L, and it's got a. Uh, it's got a J and an L, and it's got a, a GH, and then a shape indicator, and an OW, right? And then a terminator. Oh, I'm sorry. Upside down and backwards. Sorry. An O. So that's Ray J L, right? Ray J L and Ray L J. So Joel says that Ray J L and Ray L J name the same Ray. Pat says they name different Rays. Who is correct? Explain your answer. Pat. <laughs> Pat's correct. Why is Pat correct? Because you. Um, can only name uh, a ray mm -hmm. by the star. Yeah, the, the <laughs> end point, right? Which is the starting point. <laughs> which always, that's confusing, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. So J L starts at J. L J would mean it starts at L. It's end point, right? So you're correct. Pat is correct. Okay. All right. We got to look at a figure. It says use the figure to name an example of each term. So we've got three lines that are crisscrossing each other, forming an interesting kind of looking triangle. They're kind of crowded together. So let me help talk you through it. I'm going to be up at the top at letter D, where the two intersect, the two lines intersect. And if you go from letter D and you follow the line down to the right, you're going to get to letter C. And if you go from letter C directly across to the left, you're going to go through point E to point A. Okay, you see that? You go back to E, go smidge back to E, and go slightly at an angle to down to the left to point B. Find that? And then you go back up to the right, back up to D. So you got kind of this outline of a triangle, yes? three-sided figure. We're not studying triangles yet, but they're introducing them to you. You've got all sorts of points going on in this interesting little figure, right? We got A, we got B, we got C, we got D, we got E. The D is at the point at the top. It's where the two lines intersect. The E is down at the bottom left where a couple of, a, it looks like a line segment and a line intersect, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, it wants you to name an example of each of the terms. So in number three, it wants you to name some points. So give me an give me a example. There's several. So can't repeat yourself. So one of you give me a point. Rebecca, what's a point in that whole mess? What's the point of that whole mess? <laughs> uh, D. D is a point. We just want a point, right? <laughs> D. Okay, we got one point. All right, fit them. A is a point. All right, and I'll even play this game. E is a point, isn't it? Right? It's where they intersect. Okay. All right. Now we got to name a line. So we got to turn our brains on, do good thinking, and name something that's a line. That means we've got to have, we got to meet the definition of a line, right? So take a look. I only see two in this whole drawing that could technically be lines according to our definition. Mm -hmm. So that's convenient. There's two of you. All right. Counselor Haglin, what line would you like to name? Uh, line DC. DC, <laughs> line DC, good. Or we could name it backwards, line CD. All right, Counselor Fitham, where's your other line? D A jump A jumps off the line, but you're headed in the right direction. D B, yeah. <laughs> It's a little tricky down there, isn't it? It's a mess. I'm sorry, because they really crowded it together. So DB is okay. actually, if you see it, okay. That's, it gets messy. These tactiles, sometimes they crowded to this little teeny tactile. They could have taken up a lot more room with it, and they didn't want to. All right, DB, good. Okay, now take a look at your drawing. Now you've got to name a ray. So think of the definition of rays. There's several on here technically. If you remember the definition of array,
we've got to have an end point, right, and an arrowhead on the other side. What do you think, Counselor Hagland? What would you like to? What ray would you like to name? C E. C E. That's actually a segment. C to E. We need an arrowhead on the end, don't we? So try starting at D. We could go through. What could we go through and it end up with an arrowhead on the end? Oh my gosh! You got it. Did you, can you find it? D. All that down to the left. Through point E or B. You can either do e, either one. You find them. Mm -hmm. It's crowded. So you'd say Ray D E, or you could say re, Ray D B. Okay. Right. So, or we could go backwards if we wanted to name a different ray. We could start at B and go up through D. That's a totally different ray. Okay. Or we could start at E, go up through D. We could start at E and go through B. That's right. We could start at C and go through D. We could start at D and go through C. Those are all rays. But the CE, that's a segment. Okay. There's no arrowheads. CA is also no arrowhead. Okay. So now I just gave it away. I said name a segment. <laughs> like, thanks, JJ, for doing the work for me. There's lots and lots of segments, though, right? We could chop this up. We could have CD. DC. We could have DE or ED, right? You could have AE or EA. You could have EC or CE. All sorts of segments in this thing. You see all of them? Most of them? All right. Now, the number seven is ridiculous because it's a map. You can hardly make out what they want. So we're just going to skip oh. number seven. I know. Oh. This is where we get to get, I get, I get teacher license to say, uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Turn the page. It's messed up. It is messed up. All right. We want to make our way through this tactile before we ask questions about it, all right? So we got a bunch of, we got some lines, we got some rays, we got points. I'm going to start up in the top left at point A. And it's at about 10 o'clock. And it is going to extend down to the right through our through a, an F point, which is kind of an in, a center and all the way down through D. You find that? Mm -hmm. So we have A through F through D. They've got arrowheads on each end. Okay. Now I'm going to go back up totally straight up at the top and find point B. And above point B there's an arrowhead. And then if you go straight down like north to south you go through F and you get to E. You're right. Good. And there's an arrowhead. Okay. Now go over to the far right and find point C and there's an arrowhead to the right, and if you go back to the left, you end up at point F, and it stops. Okay. If you go from F and go back down to D, you end up on your original A to D. Okay. Does that make sense so far? All right. We got to go through this again. Name three points. It's a whole bunch. Each get a turn. Counselor Haglin, bring me to this court three <laughs> points, please. <laughs> C, F, and D, but you would want to say point C, point F, point D, right? Okay, you just don't go C, F, D, because the judge goes, Counselor Hagelin, you've been trained better than that. You just don't show up in my court and lazily say C, F, D. C, F, D yourself, All right? W, T, H. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, Counselor, fit them. Bring three more points to court, please. A. What? Just A? Uh, I mean, <laughs> a point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Point C. Point A. Point B. Point C. Thank you very much. All right. You're going to need to be excused in about a minute, so let's... Just do that, okay? So tomorrow we'll warm up with some more with this particular graphic, and we're probably going to have a quiz tomorrow. All right? A little quiz on sequences, finding the pattern, and then identifying a line, a point, and an array. All right? So towards the end of class, we'll probably have a quiz. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. I will give you a break tonight from homework, but yeah. try to keep in your head all these things that we talked about today, right? Because you got to come to court tomorrow.
All right. Have a good afternoon.